What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. I was just gonna say, did you hear um, Pochettino's comments about Ali? No. Prior, prior to the game. No. Uh, and I quote: "When you compare him at 21 years old with all the players in the world, not only in Europe, in the world, I think he is the best." The Spurs manager said, "I don't understand why people still criticize him. Deli Ali, for his age, is the best. That's it. Tell me one better than him at 21 years old who has achieved as much. Maybe you can find similar but better than him?" Question mark. So I pose to you. Is he the best 21-year-old? And he was born in 96, so other players either his age or younger. Mbappe, Dembele, Gabriel Jesus, Marcus Rashford, Leroy Sané, Asensio, Leon Bailly. To me, I put, I put Sané, Sané and Mbappe. Mbappe probably first, Sané second. And then... But we have to give Ali credit because he's done it for three. We're going on what three, four years now. So he sh- and he's done it in one of the top leagues in the world. So it's not just a one-off. He's been good. But I was curious. To, I heard them talking about this during the game, and I was curious to hear your thoughts. I think he has a right to be in that conversation. I'm not going to go as far to say that he's the best out of all of them, but I understand why Pochettino said it, and it makes perfect sense. Um, but besides that, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna look at it from outside of that Spurs box, I think he has a right to be in that conversation. I think he's been, and obviously this season has been his toughest, where he's gone through patches, where he has struggled a bit in terms of just goal scoring, and because we've renowned him as being that goal scorer. But I think for an English player specifically, I think he has all the tools to be a very, to be renowned as one of the better English players down the line if he keeps this up. And we just look at his game. You think that he could be that box-to-box midfielder. And he's just so adaptable because he could play as a center. He could play behind the center forward in the 10. And he's he's the reason why they pushed out Erickson to the right and the left because his ability to work into those spaces and to combine with Kane. And if one goes short, one breaks and beyond and vice versa. He could play with his back to goal. He's tricky. What really um, tarnishes his name is the fact the diving and the petulance off the ball. And he has, he's feisty. He's that type of player. Yeah. He could also play in a midfield three. We've seen that. He's adaptable. He's versatile. He, he could play a role. Those late runs into the box. He's great with his head. He has all the tools. Like I said, I wouldn't say that he's the best because what Mbappe's done at his young age in terms of, you could say what you want about the French League, but the fact that Monaco won against yeah. that PSG side. And he was one of the catalysts to that. And that deep run they made the Champions League with him, that says a lot. I thought you could look at what Asensio's done at Real Madrid. I think you could look at it more so this year, because last year he was more of a super sub. And then even at his time in Spain prior to that, but this year, I think he's really... And he hasn't done it over the full stretch, but when you look at it now, he's really sort of blossoming and finding his groove, and that's key. Who else was on that list? Um, Dembele, Gabriel Jesus, Rashford, Leroy Sané. Uh, I think Sané has a great argument as to being better. I think he's performed better this season. Um, he looked to his time at Germany, and he's going to be a Premier League title winner. And he's played a key role in that. And I think that would, I would put that Would over. elevate him? Yeah, that elevates his status. Uh, I'm still... We haven't seen enough of Jesus or Dembele, to be fair. Yeah. So I'm not going to push that button. And um, Bailey at, uh, over at Leverkusen, um, he's having a really good season. Yeah, you. it's interesting to see how that progresses into the next. Yeah, before we judge that but there's talks of him potentially getting his english uh citizenship i believe really i i think i I came across something like that i didn't even know he was english no he's jamaican he's jamaican right yeah but i believe he has some ties to To uh, to england right england yeah okay so i think that was there was some talk in the air about that so yeah i think ali's should be in that conversation and he's he's worked to 
put himself into that conversation. Uh, this summer is going to be interesting to see how that all works out because I think he starts. I think you have to start him. Ali? Yeah. Yeah, I can't see. Uh, you have to. If if Kane comes back and is fit to play, yeah. you have to go with that combination. Yeah. How could you go against something that they've been doing all season and doing well? Exactly. So Because other, other than that, I guess you could, there's a shelf for Lingard to play that position. Yeah. If you if you were to play him in in behind Kane, it's interesting. Yeah, with that, but with I, that Ali's English better team. than Lingard. At this point in his career, yeah. I think he offers more. Lingard is... I don't want to say... And I'm, a, and I'm a big fan of Lingard in I terms of what he does, but... A hundred percent. I don't want to say Lingard's one-dimensional. Yeah. But I feel like Ali is more of a mature player at this point. Yeah. He's had more time and he's he's better all around. He offers He's been more. part of title challenges and yeah. big European nights and he's played well. I don't know if Ling, I don't Lingard doesn't start in that team, by the way. I think he can make a... He'll make a push for it, but... I, I think if they play the it, big... If they play a big side... Um, in the knockout run if they get there, because that's obviously something that we have to question. I think Lingard should start on the right instead of Rashford, because I think he's very disciplined, and I think he could do a job, and I think that's why Mourinho likes him so much, and I think he can play there, because I think Sterling's going to start on the left. Yeah, his he's another guy whose spot is cemented, you, you would assume. I think Sterling's going to start on the left, so... It's and interesting. Then it depends what si- what type of formation they decide to play. I think they're going to play with three at the back. From what we're seeing Southgate say, I think yeah. they're going to play with three at the back. A 3-4-3? Three, three? Yeah. But, uh, like, the ing- that whole national team and what, like, the selections, we'll get to that s- some point down the line. It's it's a bit odd. You can talk about that for, yeah, for we an could hour go, we could just, go, we could just go, in itself. Yeah. So we'll get to that eventually. But um, anything else on Spurs? How important is... Is Eriksson the most important player to that to that system? Do you think if he's out, can anybody replace him? In the side, in terms of what they do, no. I think they could still win without him. I don't know. So your belief is that the way Spurs is built, any anybody can drop out, and the the system still works. They're not predicated on one. Yeah. On one player. Yeah, but I think Eriksson is the wild card because he's the only player that really has that creativity and ability to pick a pass from every angle of the field. So I think their game would change. It'd be more of a direct side. But I think they'd still be able to win. I think Kane's creativity is very underrated as well when he drops deep and he's able to pick a pass as well. But I think they'd still be able to win. Um, I think the same applies to Kane where... If Kane was out for a long stretch of the season, I would still put money on them finishing in the top four, but I wouldn't put money on them competing for the title. And this is just assuming that City don't have a historic season, right? Because with Kane, they can compete for a title. With Kane plays well, they can compete for a title. Can they win it? As we've seen so far, no. Yeah. And that's why I said without Kane, I still think they finish in the top four because of the system that they've um, established there and how they play, and Pochettino bringing in the players. Without Erickson, it's tough, but I think he he has to be one of their most important players, and I think you, you can make a big case that he is because he offers something different. The creativity, the set-piece taking, he could score goals as well, breaks into the box. He offers you a bit of everything, and like I said, the ability to play that final pass and that guile in the final third, it's so key. So, yeah. Um, if anyone were to make that statement, it wouldn't be ridiculous. I think it's a really good shout. I think he probably is. It'd be interesting to see if he, if he's content where he's at or if he decides to go to the next step in his career. Well, like we've said in previous podcasts, it's, it's eventually going to come down to the point where someone's going to want to get paid. Yeah. And someone's going to want to leave. And, it's all, and all it's going to take is one guy to do it, and then it's going to be okay for everybody else to do it. And then you almost feel like the dominoes might fall. Because it, it could. I feel like it really falls when, when Pochettino leaves. Because we're just going to assume that he's not going to stay there forever. I don't know if he's going to be at a big club. I don't know how it's going to unfold. I'm not going to tip him to go to a big club because I think there's so many other coaches out there that could be going to a big club as well or have ties to a big club. 
but I don't. Nothing lasts forever, so we, eventually he's gonna leave. I give him one more season. Next season, for me, personally, I believe it will be his last. It's gonna be a breaking point, especially if he if he doesn't win any trophies. I don't think I'm not saying that the fans will turn on him or ownership will turn on him. I think he'll reach a point where he's going to be saturated and he's going to be like, look, I've done what I can with this team because unless they come out of the woodworks in the summer and give him some financial boost, he's going to have to do with what he has. And I, I'm assuming as a coach that could get frustrating, especially when you see the other teams ch- that are chasing down the same trophy you are. Yeah. Keep getting that backing and keep getting that push. Thing is, we've just had this, like we've had this conversation before. And I know that he could be linked to PSG or Real Madrid, but I just think there are managers out there with a bigger name that are more coveted. That that would be that other teams would go towards that are first in line. Uh, I'm not gonna say that they're better coaches, but you would see uh, bigger teams going towards them before they go to Pochettino. I look at um, Tuchel. I look at um, sorry. I look at sorry. I look at Allegri eventually leaving Juve. I look at, um, what's his name? Julian Nagelsmann, who has a big name and was apparently linked with the Bayern job. Um, Joachim Lowe's time at Germany will eventually come to an end, and whether he wants to coach for club or country will be up in the air. You look at Conte, who eventually will go as well as we've established there's someone else that comes to mind. Mourinho's obviously. I was not just going to say, who knows what's up with Mourinho? Mourinho's not going to stay at United forever. There's also one more name that is rolling off the tip of my tongue, but can you remember where they play? Or oh, the, I'm crazy. The how, how do I not know? Diego Simeone is not staying at Le- Atletico Madrid forever. So when you put all those names into a box, Pochettino isn't the first on that. Yes. It? Yeah. And that is the thing. And so I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that he's going to pack up the bag and go, but if, if a big offer came, he would have to be opportunistic. Um, but I think the dominoes fall on him. When he decides to leave, then that could be when everything else falls. Because I think just because one leaves doesn't really, sp- it will really spark another to leave. I think we've all established that Kane will go eventually if he keeps this up. But I don't see a big market for Sun. And I don't think Sun going to another team he'll have the same impact as he'd have on the Spurs team. I think the same applies to Lucas Mora. You've already stated how you feel about um, Deli Ali. I look at Dyer doesn't really come to mind. Juan Yama, for as good as Dembele had been during that purple patch, I just feel like the consistency over an entire season, I don't think he could find a better club where he could be the main guy in the midfield. The only player that really comes to mind from an attacking sense is Ericsson. And it would have to depend on where he goes. I could see him playing in Italy if he would want to go there and do that. I feel like he has all the tools to play for like a Juventus. But for him, I don't think Bayern would be calling for him. I don't think Barca or Real would be calling for him as well. Maybe a bigger Premier League side, but even that. So... Options are really limited when you really break it down. Trippier, Davies, they're not going anywhere. Um, how Sanchez progresses will be key. Lloris isn't going anywhere. No big clubs giving him money. No big clubs giving Vertonghen money. As, as good as he's been, it's, it's, I feel like it's so system-based. I don't see him going anywhere and getting that big money unless teams are really desperate. Like when we saw Barca get Vermeilen, like yeah. who would have thought that, right? Mm-hmm. So that is why I don't think it'll fall like that, but...